Okay guys, this is your girl SK Love and as promised, I am recording a monologue, one of my favorite monologues that I just um, worked on in my scene studies class at New York Film Academy. Um, it is a monologue that is from the awesome play entitled Five Women Wearing the Same Dress. Um, and the character I'm playing is out there. So I hope you enjoy the monologue. Um, and like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, also, I'll be doing this every single Monday, I'm releasing a monologue of my choice. And if you want me to do a monologue that you think, hey, I think you would do good at this monologue, feel free to comment below. Um, and I will take that into consideration. But you guys, I'm filming on a Sunday, so happy Sunday to you guys. And I hope you have an awesome week. Peace, love, and love. walking down the aisle. First thing I saw was the back of his head. It just stuck right out at me. I recognize a little hair pattern on the back of his neck. Where his hair starts. You know, where it comes to the two points and it's darker than the rest. Oh, I always thought that was so sexy. And then I saw him outside. There was something about the way the light hit his face just broke my heart. Then I saw him outside talking to this total bitch in this navy blue linen dress with the back out. I mean, you could almost see her butt and he was smiling at her with that same smile that used to make me feel like I really meant something to him. And then it all came back just bang. <laughs> all those times I sat there, I'm rushing. It just jumped right out at me. I recognize a little hair pattern on the back of his neck. Where his hair starts. You know, where it comes to the two points and it's darker than the rest. I always thought that was so sexy. <laughs> then I saw him during the ceremony and it's just something about the way the light hit his face. It just broke my heart. And then I saw him outside talking to this total bitch in this navy blue linen dress with the back out. I mean, you could almost see her butt. And he was smiling at her with that, that same smile that used to make me feel like I really meant something to him. Then it all came back, just bang. All those times I sat waiting on his phone call. You going out of my way to make things convenient for him. Having to take a fucking taxi cab to the women's health center because my car wasn't starting. It was so cold. And that night, that awesome, awesome night, where well, I sat there. On his doorstep, staring at Tracy's burgundy cutlass in the driveway, just wishing I was dead. You no, know, I stopped smoking cigarettes that night. <laughs> If I die of lung cancer, I swear it's going to be time and Valentine's fault. <laughs> Maybe I am going crazy. My cousin George, he's a nurse. He said I'm the perfect type to get some kind of disease because I'm so emotional. 